Welcome to the nurse's station. We are here in the simulated nursing environment to run you through the tasks that you might have during your shift. You will be part of the nursing team on this floor and will be expected to make the rounds of the patients in the A ward. You are not on the code team for this shift, but you will need to be ready to respond to calls from bells or other nurses, as well as providing support for the emergency room in B ward. Let's take a look at the charts on the wall. In this modern training hospital, we are lucky enough to use tablets to record info for all of our patients. Normally, you would be using a lot of pen and ink to keep track of everyone. It looks like we have some surgery recoveries on the ward, as well as patients in for observation. These charts are synced with the charts in the patients' rooms, so no need to carry them around. Look at each chart now to see what you will be dealing with today. You hear that? Over the intercom, someone just called a code. Even if you are not on the code team right now, you need to make sure you can respond to the codes as necessary. Check on the code card above the charts to see if this code is one you need to respond to. Looks like that one is not for us. Let's go start our rounds. We need to check on the patient in room one and monitor their vital signs. If you get lost, the floor lighting can be a good guide and there are signs next to all the doors. Here we are in room one. Since this is a training room, you can see that our patient is a bit of a dummy. All of their responses and vital signs come from real patients, so we will treat them as real people who just cannot speak without help. Here, we will use the communication screen to talk to the patient. Just tap on what you would like to say, and it will vocalize it for you. The patient is ready, so let's find their chart. It should be attached to the bottom of the bed. Pick it up now. We are going to check out the patient's vitals so we need to update what we see on the chart. First, we will take their temperature. Pick up the thermometer from the wall next to the bed. It already has a disposable tip on it. Insert the thermometer into their mouth. We will leave it there while we check the respiratory monitor. Move to the respiratory monitor. This device shows how the patient is breathing. Tap the bottom of the tablet to the side of the machine to record the info. Looks like they are still doing well. Let's head back to the thermometer. Remove it from the patient's mouth. The temperature seems fine. Touch the tablet to the thermometer to record the info. Replace the thermometer into the hanger next to the bed. It will remove the old tip and replace it, ready to go again. Uh-oh. You hear that? That's the call bell we need to respond to. Use the communication screen to tell the patient you will be right back. Don't forget to return the chart to the foot of the bed. Paperwork needs to stay with the patient, even if you are not done everything. Head out into the hallway so we can see which room needs us. There it is. Room 6 is blinking. Head down there now so we can see what's up. Greet the patient using the communication screen. It's important, especially in situations like this, to identify yourself to the patient. Use the screen to ask the patient what is bothering them. Looks like they are in a lot of pain after their surgery. We need to find out if we can give them painkillers or whether we need to contact the doctor to have him change the prescription. Before we do that, 
We need to make sure there is nothing more serious. We will check their respiration and blood pressure. Look at the tablet to check what their respiration was last. Head over to the respiration monitor to get a new reading and tap the tablet on the monitor to add it to the chart. The next thing we need to check is blood pressure. Look at the tablet to check the previous blood pressure. Now move to the blood pressure monitor and record the new blood pressure by tapping the tablet to the monitor. Oh, the patient is saying something. Check the screen to see what he is worried about. Wow, he must really be in pain to say something like that. Let's make sure that we can give them something for it. Looks like they might be ready for another dose. Check the clock to make sure it has been at least three hours, as is listed on the chart. Looks like we're good. We can give them another dose. Put the chart back in its folder and head to the cabinet. You can see the doses on the shelf. Don't worry, your nurse's badge will drop the glass on the cabinet. Pick up the pre-measured dose. Great. Head back to the bed and pick up the chart. We need to make sure that they will get this next dose by making sure it gets written down. Tap the tablet onto the cup of the pre-measured dose to record it. Return the tablet to its holder at the foot of the bed. Place the pre-measured dose next to the patient where they can take it. Use the communication screen to let the patient know that you will be back to check on them later. Let's head back to our first patient and finish getting their info. Let the patient know you are back to finish up using the communication screen. Pick up the patient's chart so you can finish the checkup. Just their pulse and blood pressure left. Head to the blood pressure monitor and tap the tablet to the machine to record the info. That was the last one. Replace the patient's chart at the foot of the bed. Use the communication screen to say goodbye to the patient. Head next door to patient room 2. We will need to take some of their blood. Say hello to your new patient. Tap the greeting you would like to use on the communication screen. Pick up the patient's chart so we can see what we need to draw blood for today. Seems that it's three vials. We will differentiate between them by using different color tops. Place the chart back in its place at the bottom of the bed. The blood vials are in the cabinet on the wall. Pick up the set of them. Just like in the other room, all the cabinets here will recognize your badge. Place the vials on the table next to the patient's left arm. Another nurse has already inserted a butterfly valve, so we won't have to try and find a vein ourselves. Pick up the pink vial from the end of the holder. Place the vial in place on the butterfly valve and the blood will start to flow. Pull up. Gently remove it from the valve and place it back into the holder. Now we will repeat the procedure with the green and orange vials.
That's all of them. Pick up the vial holder. Make sure you use the communication screen to say goodbye to the patient. We need to take these vials back to the nurse station and place them in the fridge. Your badge will open it for you. It's important that they are kept visible for the lab to do their work. Those samples are safe here. Looks like emergency is full and we're done with our patients. We should head down the hall and see how we can offer assistance. From what it says on the door monitor, there was a serious crash. There are two traumas from the front seat that will be in beds one and two. We haven't scrubbed in, so we will do a head-to-toe check on the less injured person in bed four. It's vital that we make sure they don't have trauma that was missed in triage. Greet the patient using the communication screen. Looks like we're dealing with a patient with limited consciousness. They could be hurt or just still in shock from the accident. Grab a blank tablet from the counter, and we will build a basic chart for our colleagues to work from. Attach the tablet to the stand next to the trauma bed. It will record the info as we proceed. First, we will look at their head to check for any obvious trauma. Next, wave your hand above their head from above one ear to the other. Looks like they are alert, but still disoriented. Examine their neck to see if it is still in line with the rest of the body, and there are no protrusions or kinking. Seems like it's still attached. Let's look at the chest. We need to observe that they are breathing in an unobstructed way. The patient is fidgeting back and forth with their abdomen. We will have to palpate to feel if there is any problem. There could be internal damage, which could manifest as a firmness. Also, the patient's reaction will tell us if there is any pain there. Move your hand to the first highlighted location. That feels okay. Move to the second spot. Ooh, that seemed to have caused the patient a lot of pain. We noted that on the tablet. Move to the third location. This seems to be fine. Let's move on to the last location. A little rigidness there. Seems to be swollen, but not too badly, so it can wait. The doctor will be out in a moment to look more closely. The last thing to do is to look at the feet. Make sure they still have blood flow. Check to see if they are still the same color. Looking good. The patient may have some thoracic damage, but we have it on chart now. We need to take this chart back and sync it so that the doctors will have access right away. Make sure that we let the patient know that we are leaving, even if they are not fully conscious. We need to ensure that they are informed. Remove the chart from the stand. Head back to the nurse station and we will get this tablet synced. Place the chart next to the last chart on the right. It will sync with the server, and the doctors will be able to see our information and order more tests. Well, that was an exciting end to the shift. You did well.